Welcome to A Drink with James, episode two. My name is James Nord, your host, and I am the founder and CEO of Fourcard. Um, last week we put this out, people went crazy, you guys loved it, which is like kind of surprising, but it's really encouraging. People want to know more about this stuff, so I'm going to continue to drink whiskey and answer your questions. Keep sending them in. Tell me things you want to hear more of. What do you want to hear less of? Ask whatever question you have. Um, you'll get your answers whether they're right or not. Mm. Yeah, Natalie, how can you stand out in a sea of bloggers and influencers? So, first of all, it is insane just how many bloggers and influencers there are out there, which is like really great for Forecard and for us and like not so good for y'all because it keeps getting harder and harder and harder and harder. And I think whereas, you know, three or four years ago, maybe you just had to be like this good all the time. Now you have to be like this good all the time, right? And it's really frustrating. And it's especially hard if you're starting out to build a following now because people's feeds are so full, right? Like when Instagram first started, right? When you first downloaded it, you're kind of like ravenous for content. You're going around following everything you can. Every, you see one good photo from someone, you follow them right away, right? It's not really the case now. To get somebody to follow you, you have to like, you have to just be so good. They're, they're welcoming you into their life and into their feed, which is already totally full with four, five, six hundred, sometimes a thousand people that they already follow. So adding one more person is actually a really big deal. So one thing, how do you stand out? I mean, I don't know, that's different for every person. I'd say that like, first things first, you just have to be you, you have to just be original. You can't look to other people and copy them. Um, certainly you can kind of look at other influencers who are really successful, to take what they do and interpret it through your eye. But you know, you really have to try and be an individual and you have to try and have a unique point of view. Uh, another thing I would say is that, you know, feed consistency is important if you're trying to grow your following because when somebody clicks on your name, let's say a brand tags you, right? You do some sponsored post or they want to regram something that you've done, they click on your name, they go to your feed, that's a landing page, right? Your feed is a landing page that needs to convert them from that initial click where they say, I'm interested, who is this person? To then going in and looking at three or four photos and then following you, right? So that first photo that they see of you, the first time they see you mentioned on someone else's account, they're probably not going to just blindly follow you because again, this isn't, you know, 2012. Uh, these things are a little bit harder to get. So, you need to get them to go onto your feed. Your feed needs to look consistent. It needs to look beautiful. It needs to look a little bit different, perhaps. Have the same kind of colors, the same kind of styles, tones, contrast, all that is important. Um, and then they're going to open up a couple photos and they're very gonna, quickly going to decide, do I want to follow this person or do I not want to follow this person? So consistency, point of view, really important. That would be my advice. Okay. Yeah, Nicole, how do you pitch brands if you have a smaller following? First things first. Mm. Jig of the cheap stuff today. This is bullet. Um, so, how do you pitch brands if you have a smaller following? So, I think, Nicole, I think you had said something around 5,000, right? And it's tough because, you know, again, three or four years ago, 5,000 followers, that's nothing to, you know, that's nothing to like completely write off. That's a decent amount of people. Um, but, in the kind of larger landscape, it, it is smaller. It's a smaller following. So my suggestion would be kind of twofold. First, make sure that you're already a fan of the brand. Don't just go wildly pitching brands that you want to work with that you aren't already a fan of and you aren't already working. When you come to a brand, you remember last week, if you haven't seen last week's video, Tim's going to put it right here, right? Okay. Click on that. Look at it. I talk a bit about how um, what that first contact to a brand is supposed to do, right? That first email you send them is supposed to start the conversation. It's not supposed to totally sell them on your pitch. Um, so pay attention to that. But when you do send that email, you want to be able to say, hey, I'm a huge fan of this brand. Here's all the content I've already produced for you. Here's my new idea. Uh, back when I used to be a photographer, I did this all the time. And my first kind of job I got with the brand is actually Jay Lindenberg, whose suit I'm wearing right now, and shirt actually. Um, and I was already a customer and I sent their CEO an email. Um, and I can actually put up a screenshot of that email somewhere. Um, I'll 
I'll let Tim figure out how to do it, but he'll put a link like right here to that screenshot of the initial email I sent maybe six years ago to their CEO. But I was basically like, I'm a customer. There's like this menswear thing happening. You guys aren't involved in it. I'd like to get you involved in it. I already have the guys I want to shoot. Um, I already know what I want to shoot. And I think I can get you into GQ. Are you interested? And they were like, yes. So the reason that worked was one, I was already a fan. I could show them how I was already talking about them. I was already promoting them without them asking. I think that's really important when you don't have a big following. Two was I made it really easy. There was literally nothing that they had to do. I already knew who I wanted to shoot. They were bloggers. They were going to get them some reach. I knew what I wanted to shoot. Um, I was just going to borrow it from the store. They didn't have to give me any clothes or anything like that. Uh, and I had a way to get it beyond just me. I, I had a connection with GQ and I was going to get it into the magazine. So for them, it's just like, oh, okay, that's, that's really easy. But if you come to a brand and you just say, hey, I love your brand. I'd love to work with you. Okay. Like, now they have to think about, okay, well, first of all, who the hell are you? Do I care? Um, what should we do together? Do I have to pay you? How is it going to look? Are you even a fan of the brand? There's, there's too many questions and they're just going to say no, because that's a lot easier. But you say, I'm already a fan of this brand. Here's the times I post it. This is exactly what I want to do. Can I borrow this? You don't have to pay me. I'm going to crush this for you. You can use this content. I'm going to give you 10 extra photos to put onto your Instagram, whatever it is. Make it super easy for them, make their lives easier, um, and you have a much better chance of getting that deal. Jess, Jess, we don't have your last name, but thanks for the question. What do I not do when it comes to social platforms? So, well, first of all, don't buy your followers. Like, four card, we can tell when you're buying your followers. Um, so like, you're gonna get caught, and then it's gonna get awkward, because we're gonna have to like, not have you on the platform. Uh, it's not worth it, right? Like, <laughs> If your following goes up and your engagement doesn't go up, like people are going to notice, right? It's like having a Ferrari and living in a trailer. Like it doesn't really work. A Ferrari is not doing anything for you. So that's one thing you absolutely should not do. The other thing is, is, is kind of what I spoke to in the first question, which is copying other people. Um, I was at some point thought like, oh, I should like grow my Instagram following. Um, I spent like two weeks on it and it didn't work. So I just quit. But um, that's why you guys are professionals and, and I do this, but you know, I was doing it and I like, I went out and I was like, okay, cool. I need a Brooklyn bridge photo and I need a photo of the city like this. And I need this photo and I need this photo. And there's all these kind of like Instagram -y photos. I was trying to be more of like an Instagram photographer, less of like a menswear guy, but this is, this happens in every space, right? If you were just going to be a personal style blogger or a food blogger, whatever it is, there's like classic shots that everybody takes. And then you try and copy those shots. Right. But the thing is, the people who you're copying are better at it than you are because like for them, that's just natural. That's what they do. That's what they're really good at. So you're trying to copy someone and you do a worse job of it. And then you're surprised when it doesn't work. But you see how like it doesn't make sense. So like, again, the only thing you can do is be you, be yourself. That's the, that's literally the thing in the world that you can do and be best at, right? Is be yourself. So, Going around and copying other people, it's just, it's not going to work. It feels easy. It feels like what you should do. Um, but you know, if pink peonies or gal meets glam is, that takes a certain type of photo that's really beautiful and like does really well, it doesn't mean that you can, it doesn't mean that makes sense for you to do that. So make sure it makes sense for you. Make sure it feels authentic and, and make sure you're being yourself. All right. So that's it. Three questions. We're done. I got to finish this whiskey real quick. Mm. Ah, so. You have questions you need asked. Oh God. Um, if you have questions you need asks, you use this hashtag, drink with James, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, um, Facebook. Don't email me. I get enough emails. I love you guys, but like, I'm not super interested in getting emails about this. So just like drink with James hashtag on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'll answer the questions. I'll keep drinking. If you have a whiskey suggestion, send that in to me as well. Um, I'm down to try anything that's whiskey. I'm not drinking rum or gin. I'm not a total masochist. So thank you guys. Much love. I'm out.